I'm a busy day today guys, we're going to go and fix my truck problem so it's going to take a couple of, at least a couple of hours, maybe more. Hopefully we can do a, a two hour plus live video. But anyway guys, I'll turn the camera around. So what I'm doing right now guys is just making some lunch and we're going to go outside and eat this beautiful toasted cheese, tomato and onion sandwich. So this is just a typical lunch for me. Usually toasted cheese uh, and tomato. Okay, just something simple and rarely do I eat lunch guys and girls So <coughs> And uh, the reason I'm eating lunch today is because of uh, My cough guys. I'm taking a medication for my cough. So I need to take the medication on the full stomach So anyway, it's just a beautiful homemade or homegrown tomato and cheese with homemade bread what I cook in my um, bread machine and I cut it with a paint scraper guys just like that so yeah the last few days I haven't been able to do live videos guys because uh, they've been upgrading the either the 5G or the or adding 5G or just upgrading the 4G network so uh, let's get started guys we'll go outside nippers are uh, there just uh pruning himself, wandering the yard, <whistles> that snipper saying hello, so let's get outside guys, it's going to be a busy day, I've got to get this fuel problem fixed and I'll just make sure everything's right on my computer. So there's all links below in the description box if you're interested guys. So um, so this is where my Kia truck broke down yesterday. If you want to watch that video yesterday, the link's in the description box. And this video here <coughs> is uh, when the, the uh, truck started stalling. Okay, so I did a live video, went out to Dale's place, my mate Dale, and the truck started stalling. So I just checked to make sure <coughs> everything's okay, guys. Sorry for the cough, I've got a. I'll draw a video on that soon, guys and girls. It's just bad during the day, it's uh. Sorry. I'm just making sure that. Everything's okay on my computer, and then we'll head outside. Yep, let's go, guys. All right. Car, Sophie. So. Let's grab a few things, guys. I've got everything set up outside. Cup of tea here. Let's close this door so my little cat. See, look, he's trying to get out now. Naughty. So the reason I don't want him out, guys, is so my, he doesn't do anything to my magpie. Or the magpie, because uh, Nip and my magpie and uh, Alfie, the cat, um, aren't the biggest fans of each other and the last thing I want is for either <coughs> Alfie to get his eye poked out by Nipper's razor sharp beak because that Nipper will do or Alfie hurting Nipper so Nipper's really good with Beauty the black cat which is 19 years of age sometimes they'll have a bit of an argument but it's mainly mainly Alfie so Alfie's more or less a Stays inside all day, <coughs> sleeps all day inside the house, and then he'll uh, go outside for a few hours during the night and come back in about probably 10 o'clock at night and sleep for the rest of the night. All right, guys, have I got everything? There's always something I forget. It's a busy day, guys. Got everything set up. So I just want to let people know I'm definitely no mechanic. I'm definitely not mechanically minded. 
And this is my hoard, what I need to get and clean up, guys. But I try my best, guys. I learn every time. So what we're going to do today, guys and girls, is remove this fuel tank, completely drain it. Okay, do a few other things on the other side. I'm going to uh, right here. We're going to remove a little nut So that shiny nut just down there guys We're going to remove that one there What's this one So inside there there's a little wire filter And we're going to remove that and make sure that's all clean Because sometimes I've had problems with that getting clogged up And uh, there's a special way of removing that filter Just a little tiny wire bulb filter and we'll probably do that in one of the first tasks. Okay, I've got my homemade tripod set up here in a jar full of uh, blue metal. Just use your imagination, guys. You can make a tripod out of anything. And uh, we've got to remove that little bulb with these tweezers. So hopefully it's going to work, guys. It's really tricky to remove the bulb. This thing here I actually found on the side of the road It fell out uh, It's a magnet thing guys So they, obviously they had it stuck underneath the car They turned the corner and it fell off And I found it a couple of months ago So it's a really handy tool And also I've got a possible I probably won't do I probably won't do a video on this guys But my radiator's Kind of either leaking water or coolant So I've got to clean the radiator check it for leaks and uh, Put new coolant in it. Okay <clears throat> So this is basically the engine bay so you lift the seats up guys um, And yeah and uh, So I don't really do any mechanics. So I get mechanic in wage and to do any major work. I'll talk about that soon guys also got to remove the filter, I'm going to put a new filter on, a new fuel filter and a few other things guys, but anyway let's have a bit of lunch <coughs> because there's something else I need to do first, hopefully I'll get my tripod guys and so there's always something guys and girls, there's never enough time, you know I'm trying to get all my jobs done and There's always something what stuffs up and ruins my plans. <coughs> I want you to hear Alfie crying, wanting to come outside. And this beautiful clay pot here I bought yesterday guys we're gonna do a video on completely waterproofing that soon and uh, putting a beautiful water plant in it anyway that's where I'm gonna sit right now and have my lunch Sophie, come here. Good girl, come here. Come on, good girl. I've got to put my mask on her, guys. Come on, good girl. Good girl. Come here, come on. So better be safe than sorry.
to a comment then, guys. So just feel free to ask me any questions. G'day, Joyce. Oh, beautiful. I'd love to visit Nashville, maybe one day. I'll visit America. I doubt, I doubt it. So it's about probably 12.30 uh, lunchtime here today. It's a beautiful day, about 20 degrees Celsius. Um, we're about a, a week away from winter. And it's very, very dry, guys. The farmers are desperate for rain. Rain for the rain's about at least four to six weeks overdue, so it looks like it could be a possibly a bad year for the farmers. Who knows? <coughs> and that's Alfie crying. It's, he never usually does that, guys. It's probably because he can hear me talking. Yeah, you know, I just can't afford it at the moment, Joyce. I've got no money at all. And I've just got too much stuff happening at the moment. So, one day, everything will... I don't know. I'd rather just travel around Australia one day, Joyce. I've done it before, but do a proper all-around Australia in a nice... We're at a land cruise, what the Shire Dumb is going to buy me in the near future. A nice $150,000 fully decked out land cruiser. So I'm just going to uh, connect up my tripod, guys, to make my battery last. I've got a USB, so I want to try and do a good, decent long video. It's going to take, hopefully we can do a three hour plus video. I've got a USB, my charger, so I want to, uh, this is going to take at least three or four hours probably, guys. <coughs> Just make sure it's all right. So I haven't even got a clue if it's going to charge. So basically I've just got a USB charger inside the phone at the moment with a big long extension cord and uh, hopefully it'll all work out guys. <coughs> so I'm just making, just made myself a beautiful toasted cheese and tomato sandwich for lunch guys. This is a typical, uh, what I do love um, with my toasted cheese and ham sandwiches, sorry, toasted cheese and uh, tomato is onion white onion and also ham's beautiful too but i'm not a big fan of the processed ham i don't really eat too much meat really guys especially the processed stuff the only real processed meat i eat is basically maybe uh salami a little bit of pepperoni sometimes bacon whether or not that's processed or not i'm unsure and very very rarely uh Sliced salami, maybe polony, and uh, I think they call it bologna in America. We call it polony with a P. But yeah, but <clears throat> this is just a standard lunch for me, guys and girls. And rarely do I eat lunch. It's mainly just uh, eat nothing all day and just have a decent meal at night and heaps of cups of teas. And I've done that ever since I've been a kid, guys and girls. So my garden's looking beautiful out the front. I'm gonna do another live video on that soon. So there's a reason I'm getting all my garden looking good, guys. You're all gonna know about that soon. Yeah, I can't really afford to go overseas anywhere, Joyce. I'm just more worried about staying at home at the moment. And maybe when the time's right, I'll travel around Australia. I've travelled all around Europe and some of the Middle East, Asia. 
I'm just happy being home based at home. So what we're going to do soon, guys, you can see this piece of aluminium here. We're going to make a nice homemade spanner, okay? To <clears throat> this is called a truck fuel water sensor. <coughs> so a truck fuel water sensor. And the worst thing about these is when you take them off with a spanner or monkey grips, you'll break them. And it's really, really frustrating and scary. The reason it's scary, guys, if you break down in the middle of the bush and you're due to a fuel sensor problem and you break this like I have here <clears throat> and you can't remove it, then you're going to be stuck out bush. So I got told to make <coughs> a homemade one using a, either a hard piece of plastic or a uh, nice piece of aluminium. So I want to get the angle grinder out soon. We're going to measure it. I've already measured it, and hopefully we can make a nice little spanner because I need to remove the current fuel sensor what's on my truck. <coughs> so, That big pot you just saw that I'm sitting in right now, guys. I bought that in Catania yesterday. <coughs> $240. Whereas the ones, what I'll show you in a minute, I got for free. So I've been spending a lot of money lately, guys and girls. I've been saving my money the last probably 10 years, so I've got some pretty good savings at the moment. The only debt I've got is paying off, you know, a hundred thousand dollar debt. And I reckon I've probably another couple of years I should have it all paid off. <clears throat> G'day the poacher. Thanks for joining. So guys, I lost this house here is my parents' house. My dad brought it in around 1980. <clears throat> And I had a business called the Dunby Young Post Office and the News Agency. And basically, it was the worst decision I ever made was to get into a stupid business. I don't even know why I did it. And uh, it was just me making a rash, silly decision. I was with a girl by the name of Natalie. And it was even my suggestion. So the post office and the news agency was for sale in Dunby Young. And it's a little nursery. And I was going out with this girl called Natalie and she was a beautiful girl a lot of problems as herself and I suggested to Natalie why don't we just go and buy the post office and start a little business <clears throat> anyway to cut a long story short guys I, we took out a loan and I put this house as equity to the business so if I lost the business I'd lose this house okay and I eventually lost the business and I nearly lost this house luckily I was bailed out hundred thousand dollars by a very very close relatives and uh, they were so kind to me that they let me pay it off interest free so basically what I've been doing for probably the last seven years is paying off a thousand dollars a month I pay two hundred and fifty dollars a week interest free and uh, I told them I don't even know I don't even want to know how much I owe okay so I want them to let me know, like to say, for example, next week I pay off $250 and that's my final payment, but I don't know this. That's when I want them to say, congratulations, Bill. It's all, the debt's paid off. You don't have to pay any more. So right now, I don't know how much I owe. It could be $40,000, it could be $50,000, it could be $60,000, it could be $10,000, it could be $5,000. I don't know, guys. So I just want to wait until I pay the final payment and then they let me know that it's all over and no more stress. It's not really stressful, guys. It's, you know, pretty good. But like I say, I'm just so lucky that my very, very close family um, member bowled me out of $100,000. So they negotiated with Bank West and the debt, <coughs> I think the actual debt what I owed 
for the business was probably close to $200,000 and they negotiated with Bank West and we got it down to $100,000 <clears> so it's very lucky guys this beautiful house I've grown up in since I was the age of nine years of age and uh, you know if I had lost that and I've done many many videos about what it was like losing my house and tearful videos and uh, videos of me talking about negotiating with the bank and th them not wanting to have a uh, a bar of me and uh, but anyway thankfully I got, I got bailed out so this is going to be my home until basically the day I die guys just so grateful guys that I've got beautiful family And, you know, just beautiful memories of this house, guys. It's my childhood house. <clears throat> right here where I'm sitting, guys, in around 1980. <clears throat> on Christmas Day. I've got the photo of it. I just need to find it. It's in my 21st birthday album. On Christmas Day, I looked outside the window. Just here. There's two windows. So that window there. I looked out there on Christmas Day about 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, you couldn't sleep. Well, Christmas morning, I looked out the window, and it's a beautiful RM50 Suzuki, brand new motorbike sitting on the veranda, with a big yellow helmet sitting on the seat. And uh, it was the best Christmas present I ever had in my life, guys. It's about 10 years of age, and my dad brought it for me. <clears throat> and my uh, two best mates, Vernon Cooper and Brycey Cooper, who are both brothers, they also had... Vernon had an RM50, exactly like mine, a Suzuki RM50. And his Brycey had probably a, a smaller CC motorbike. Brycey was a couple of years younger than Vernon. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we spent all our, year, you know, for probably two or three years out the bush just riding our motorbikes out bush. And it was just, just beautiful memories. <coughs> Vernon's mum and dad used to run the Dumble Young uh, roadhouse or they owned it and prior to that Vernon's dad was a police officer in Dumbleyong and they live in a little country town now they're still alive probably in the 80s but Vernon's one of my Facebook friends so if you want to add me to Facebook guys I'm, I've actually I've always hated Facebook but I've only recently joined um, so uh, my Facebook is in the profile on my the very top of the page I haven't got many friends about 50 but mainly guys my Facebook is all dedicated to Meteor Island okay it's got nothing to do with my YouTube channel it's all everything to do with uh, Meteor Island and uh, so mainly most of my friends there are <coughs> Noongar Aboriginal people okay so it's all about trying to save um, Meteor Island <coughs> And it's just videos on Meteor Island, basically. G'day, CG. Thank you so much for your beautiful message you sent me on Facebook, mate. I'm so sorry that I never got to reply. It was such a long message, mate. I'm so grateful. And I'm so glad that, you know, you believe in God. And it's just such a beautiful message, CG. So please don't feel offended that I didn't reply, mate. I'm just so busy. with a lot of crap happening behind the scenes. Um... And I just, you know, just it's no, I know it's no excuse, but <laughs> it's just when you're uploading YouTube videos, I'm basically trying to pump out as many as I can, and it's so hard to keep up with the comments. It's not just you; it's all my other good subscribers like DJ, Greg, Frank, uh, Bridget, and uh, all the other people who always comment on my videos. I don't get many people who comment, but just a few. But it's always to say the same people <coughs> all right guys so hopefully my phone's charging up as um I'm making this video so I can do a decent three or four hour long video. I'll finish this one guys and we'll get started.
So I'm worried about this, uh, guys and girls. Um, I just don't want to make any mistakes. I'm no mechanic. I'm not mechanically minded at all. But it should be pretty easy. All we've got to do is take that fuel tank off and completely drain it. And then we're going to dry it all on the inside. So luckily there's a little round hole in the top of the fuel tank where you put your hand in. The only thing is, it's razor sharp. Last time I did it, I cut all my fingers. So you've got to be careful of cutting yourself. It's like razor sharp on the uh, top and also on the very bottom. So, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll all work out, guys. To see a beautiful little bird. Having a swim in my bird bath. There it is, see? It's the first time I've seen a bird. Oh no, it's the wrong one. Hold on, there it is. It's a honey eating type bird. I forget its name, guys, but it's a beautiful thing. When you see there's another bird next to it, just about to hop over. There it goes, having a swim, having a bath. There it goes, another one. So that's a beautiful little honey eater bird, or nectar, loves nectar, and maybe our little in insects. yellow, black, brown and white. Anyway guys, my garden's looking really beautiful. My front my front garden, we're getting there. I'm gonna be doing a live video sooner. Just a little bit more work on that. And then in the next few days we're gonna Hopefully do some concreting to uh, put my post holes in. <clears throat> it's never ending. All right guys, so turn the camera around. Oh, okay. No, I appreciate it. I didn't see that, mate. I'll just let you know something, CJ. I've just given Facebook a rest for a while. Um, because I'm just so busy doing other stuff. But I've got a heap of videos I need to upload on there. Just my <clears throat> Meteor Island videos. But I just haven't... Uh, I've given YouTube... A, I mean, sorry, Facebook a rest. I'm not the biggest fan of Facebook. It's really confusing to me. Um, I actually used to be a member of Facebook a long time ago, about 12 years ago. I had a, a lot of friends. They weren't my real friends, but I had a big uh, a car website called Butte Utes. It was a SUV website. I had about 10,000 members. <clears throat> it was mainly associated to, to that website. But anyway, I ended up getting banned from Facebook. That's another long story. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've never done this before. All right, so what we're going to do first is this piece of metal. Here's a piece of aluminium. We're going to make a homemade spanner, okay? So I can remove my fuel sensor. I've just explained about that, but we're going to make a homemade spanner. Hopefully I can do it, guys, but like I say, I'm no expert. <clears throat> so, here we go.
bloody battery's flat. I'm just going so I can get my battery, guys. This one will probably be flat as well, knowing my luck. So I'm using a Katana angle grinder, guys, a battery. I don't know what I paid for it, probably 200, 250 bucks, maybe cheaper. I just can't remember. So I had to buy the two batteries separately. But it's a nice little angle grinder, especially good for scrapping. I'm gonna put this on charge guys and we'll come back and we'll start on the next job. Alright, so I'll put it on charge and then we'll start on the next job. We'll start taking the fuel tank off, eh? I'll just set up, I'll be back in two minutes. Let's get started guys, so we'll take the camera off, and anyway guys, just before I start, we're going to do a live video soon of uh, putting the rifle, so this one of this one, uh, this native grass here, I think it's called a twig rush grass, a native twig rush, so it's a beautiful like flat grass or uh, bulrush, we're going to put this in this little pot. Uh, in a video soon, it's going to concrete it, waterproof it, make sure it's all um, fully waterproof. While we do that, we're also going to do waterproof this uh, concrete sink because it's all full of hairline cracks. And we're going to fix up my pond, add the bulrush, one of these twig rushes in there and just beautify my uh, outdoor frog and tadpole pond. So that's coming up soon, guys. We're, doing videos just about every day I haven't been able to do live videos because of uh, as I said previously they've been uploading or sorry working on the uh, the 5G system or the 4G system All right, hopefully this is gonna work guys We've just got a homemade tripod I'll be back in two minutes guys, I'm just going to set up my other tripod on the other side of the truck for the fuel tank removal.
All right, thanks for watching guys all right so just so you know this is really really tricky this one so so all we need to do guys is remove this bolt right here okay I think it's this one if it's not this one it's that one just over there I don't know if you can see that I'm pretty sure it's this one so I think this is a fuel pump on the Kia K2700 truck in South Africa guys this is really really a popular truck they call it the Kia Bongo okay and also these Kia trucks were used in the Syrian war Iraq I think uh, but mainly Syria or maybe even Afghanistan and you'd see these Kia trucks with you know the big machine guns melted on the back and the ISS, the ISIS terrorists or whatever they were the ISIS soldiers would be always driving in these Kia K2 700 trucks and be fully decked out with machine guns on the back like big anti-aircraft guns bolted into the trays so it's a pretty popular truck guys I've had this since the year 2000 I don't know how long probably since about the year 2013 uh, no sorry the two year 2014 and I only average around 10,000 kilometres a day, guys. <laughs> a day. Um, a, a year. Alright, so what we're going to do is remove this bolt. And inside this um, fuel pump, as I say, guys, I'm no mechanic. But there's a little tiny uh, wire filter, okay? And I've had problems with this before. And usually what happens is it'll get clogged up with gunk. And there's a special way of removing it, guys. And you don't want to stuff it up. And I'll show you that special way in a minute. So the last thing you want to do is stuff things up, okay? Always be very, very careful when you remove stuff. See that washer? The last thing you want to do, guys, is lose that washer. Okay? So, so, so right now what I can see is a little spring, okay, and under, and that spring is sitting on top of a little wire mesh bowl, and the only way you can remove that mesh bowl is by using tweezers, okay, so what you do is you close the tweezers, and then you release them when you release it, the tweezers will latch onto the little spring and the uh, wire mesh bowl and you can lift it up slowly. So also whenever you do stuff like this guys, always have something underneath the bottom of the, the truck or your car in case you lose something. So right now I've got a, a tarpaulin, okay, so if anything, if I drop anything important it's going to land straight on that tarpaulin and not get lost in the dirt and so forth. So here we go. So I've got three different tweezers here. So this one here is not really the best. But you need some good tweezers like this. Okay. With spring, springy type tweezers. You don't want to be pulling out this wire mesh with a pin. Or something sharp the last thing you want to do is poke a hole in the wire mesh guys you'll see what I do all right so what I'm going to do now is put this in here it's fiddly I can see the spring it's The actual spring looks Oh my god, I'm doing it wrong What am I doing? Oh shit, I was taking out the wrong one I was taking, trying to take it out of here And I was missing the wrong one So I'll zoom up and I'll show you So 
So, so what I was doing just then, guys, I was trying to take it out of this one because I'm a little bit nervous. Whereas I should have been taking it out of this hole. There's also another little washer there. So, like I say, guys, you do not want to lose washers. Just take your time. Right, so you might be able to just see the top of the spring there. So here we go. So there's the spring. See how the tweezers have latched onto it? Like that. So when you do it, guys, you close this put this, the tweezers in like this then you release it and that'll lash onto the spring like that so I'm mainly doing this video for people who own Kia trucks guys and also now on the bottom there's a little tiny so exactly the same method there's a little tiny wire mesh bowl and the last thing you want to do is poke a hole in the bottom of it oh, here it comes look see look at that guys beautiful so that's what's caused me major problems with my Kia truck before that little tiny mesh uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a little fuel filter, and uh, it hasn't happened for a few years. It looks pretty clean looking at it right now, but just gunk getting in there and uh, blocking up the fuel system somehow. But it looks pretty clean to me right now, guys. But anyway, we'll take it out. There you are. It's about the size of the head of a bullet. I'm just going to inspect it in the sunlight. Excuse my fingers, guys. I'm a nail biter ever since I've been a kid. Alright, looks pretty clean. But I'll show you a good way of cleaning it. So the best way to clean this, guys, is either with a high-powered air compressor, compressor uh, for the with the air, or it pumps out the air, or gotta find it. Or with a can of compressed air, Boston compressed air, an air duster for cleaning keyboards, etc. So this is good. But what's better is using a proper uh, air compressor hose with like a little, so just like this. So I cannot recommend these enough guys, these are excellent for your computer desk, your keyboards, uh, especially if you're a smoker, I used to smoke, but you know when you're smoking at your computer desk and get on your desk, good way to just get clean off the cigarette ash what falls on your computer desk, that's what I originally got them for when I used to smoke. Anyway, so this is the main, if you're having problems with your Kia Bongo, your Kia K2 700 truck, this is probably, or could be, one of the main issues. This little tiny bulb filter, I don't know what it's called guys, but check that first, and 
what I've found previously is I had black gunk in it. It was literally covered in like a black gunk on the bottom so the fuel couldn't filter through these little tiny minute holes. Alright, so now what we're going to do is put it back in once again for the tweezers. So as I say, you don't want to be pulling out this um, little bulb with a pin or a nail. Use tweezers, guys. That's what you've seen me do. Close the tweezers, open it, and it'll stay there. I'm going to put it back in. So that's one job nearly done. Alright, here we go guys. And just release it, release the tweezers, make sure it's sitting in there correctly. And I'll grab the spring. Nearly, nearly lost the spring, guys. Okay, I'm just trying to fix up my camera. Every time I touch the screen. So, the tweezers, the springs there. Want to stop this up? Okay, the spring sitting back in there. Now what we're going to do? Let's put this washer. I'm putting diesel fuel all over my phone. So we're just going to put this washer back on, guys. Like that. Put this thing back there. I'm going to bolt it back on. Don't forget, it's got two washers, one on the very bottom and one on the bolt. So I'm also going to give this a clean too. I'm just going to give this little bolt a clean, it's got holes in it. Do it up. So as I say guys, if you own a Kia K2700 truck, if you've got fuel problems, stalling, always check this one first. And that could be the problem. Okay, so I've just done it that bolt. So 
tied nut. Right, now that one's done. Alright, so that looked pretty good, so it must be the fuel tank. What's well, dirty, I reckon. So there you go, guys, it's that one. So there's two similar, one over there. See the bolt just there to the right. See that one there. Don't take that one off. That's got out written on it, O-U-T. It's that one there, what I just took off. And that's one job done, guys. So now the big one is the uh, fuel tank. So this is gonna be a pain. We should be able to do it. All right, so there's going to be a little bit of moving around with this tripod, guys. So I'm going to have to lower it. I'm just going to lower my tripod. Guys and girls, just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using a man, is it a man fretto or a man fretto tripod? It's a good one. This is where it's going to get a little bit scary. So as I say guys, I'm no mechanic and I don't want to stuff this up. Um, Alright, I'll just grab a couple of tools. lower this tripod once more guys just so you can see me do it so you know what to do so it's got less than a quarter of fuel in at the moment Just putting my battery charging cable in. Yup, that's working. Right guys, hopefully I don't lose any uh, reception, they're doing works on their 4G or 5G network. Hopefully we can make a good video. Let's 
of a couple more tools. So I'm going to remove the fuel lines, guys. Another more tools. Pliers, you see that all right, guys? We're going to remove these fuel lines. One. Two. Now the one what worries me the most Guys, is this one here? It's an electrical cable. Oh, got it. Thank God for that. You see that? So that's an electrical cable. That was the scariest one. The last thing I want to do is break it. Now, just a Phillips head screwdriver, there's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, what I'm going to do, guys, is grab my magnet. The last thing I want to do is lose these screws. What we might do first, guys, is actually remove the fuel tank first, then we'll take these off. But this is my magnet. That one there. So there's two bolts, and it's held down by a metal strap with rubber underneath the metal. So we'll undo this one here, and this one, and hopefully drop the fuel tank. I've got a pallet here, a couple of bricks, just so it doesn't lose balance. I might use for identifying sizes, guys. It's just me guessing. As I say, I'm no mechanic. Might be that one. No. There it is. Let's 
we did all right. One. Right, so the straps will lift up like that. There we go. Alright, now it's gonna Hopefully it'll just slide away guys. Here we go. So now what we might do is take it over to my main area, my little work area, and we'll take off these little Phillips head screws, we'll drain the tank, and then we'll give it a good clean out with um, some nice dry towels. Alright, so I'll move the camera guys. We'll go back over to my work area. This is a concrete mixer, what dolls lent me. It's my beautiful vice. It's eBay, just a cheap one. Oh, 
I'll always cover it guys just so it doesn't get rusty. I'll go and grab the fuel tank. Just plugging in my phone, guys, so we can the batteries don't run flat. Right, so now I've got to work out where I'm going to put all this fuel. I've got a couple of buckets, so yeah. What I really want to do, guys, is just uh, see exactly what comes out of the fuel. sandpaper guys clean this bucket out so it's all totally clean so we can see if there's any gunk in this fuel pretty clean all right now to undo these so there's Evan uh, eight Phillips head screws guys so we're gonna undo this Definitely don't want to lose them. So I'm just gonna put them on my on my magnet like that. That's that one done. So I'm just going to grab some uh, rags, guys, and get the top of the fuel tank clean so no dirt goes back inside the fuel tank.
Good. Just a good suggestion, guys, especially for women uh, and also men. Always make sure you carry rags in your cards, okay? Just old t-shirts, pillow slips, but cotton is the best. Cotton. So, I'm going to remove this, and there's going to be a, another fuel filter attached to it. little filter there guys so I'm gonna lay that on top of another rag All right. I'm gonna go and grab my head torch guys and we'll look inside this tank and just see if there's any gunk in there okay Actually looks pretty clean. I can't see any dirt in there at all. It could be contaminated fuel guys or Dale also said it could have been water. Condensation might have uh, got inside the jury uh, the jury can. So I'll show you. <laughs> Hopefully we won't explode. Anyway, we're going to have to refill this up with beautiful fresh fuel. Alright guys. Looks pretty clean. Whereas the last time I cleaned it, there was definitely all full of gunk. So hopefully it is a fuel problem, guys. Anyway, there's less than half a tank of fuel there. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Realise, guys, I shifted it the wrong way. Hold on. 
going to be easier if I drain it out of the bloody cup. Right, we're going to have to put this back on, guys. What I'm going to do is drain it out of here. Doesn't matter. Learn by your mistakes, but I needed to look in there anyway, guys. So I needed to look in there anyway. But it is extremely likely that I've used old fuel as well, guys. Old fuel. But what I've done is I've filled it up with fresh fuel, like a three quarters of a tank of fresh fuel then i've got an old tank of fuel from a year ago an old jerry can of fuel and topped it up hoping that it'd be okay so that could be the problem guys using expired diesel fuel because diesel fuel's only got a lifespan of about probably 12 months so in winter guys and girls they add an additive in um in winter to the fuel to stop it from to stop for when the temperature gets below zero something like that and they also do the same in summer they'll add a summer additive so in winter they add a winter additive to the diesel fuel and in summer they add a summer additive to the diesel fuel so you definitely do not want to mix winter additives with summer additives And they do that the same with unleaded as well, unleaded. It's my own fault guys because I've been stockpiling diesel fuel for emergencies. So I've probably got about six jerry cans of uh, old diesel fuel from well over a year ago. Just grab the keys, we've got to open this up. Right, so now what we're going to do is just I'm trying to think. I'll put it in the bucket. It won't go to waste, guys, so you can use the diesel fuel for cleaning your hands and other stuff. Let's hope it works. Yeah, 
Yup, I can definitely see a lot of gunk. The tank is literally full of black gunk, guys. The tank is literally full of black gunk and possibly diesel algae. So, sorry guys, there's a lot of black gunk there. Let's stir it. Let us see it goes. It's probably all gone to the bottom now. But it was all full of black gunk. It's like quite large pieces. There it is. See it all floating around? There was much bigger pieces than that, what I saw. Look at it all. Oh, that's my own stupid fault, guys. Look at that big piece there. Diesel, dirty diesel fuel, guys, using a dirty jerry can as well. It's my own fault finding jerry cans out local rubbish dumps and repurposing them. That's what the problem looks like. It's probably is, guys. Dirty uh, jerry cans. Some big pieces there. Look at it all going around. And that bucket was totally clean. So hopefully I haven't stuffed up my truck. Should be alright. Alright, so we'll set up this tripod again guys. Continue cleaning up this, cleaning up the uh, I'm just going to empty the rest on the ground, guys. Okay. Take these back off. Now what we're going to do is completely clean it with nice clean rags on the inside. Oh shit. That was lucky. Dropped it guys. Like the piece of metal was sitting there. If I lose one of these little Phillips head nuts, guys, I'm stuffed.
lot of gunk in the bottom there, guys and girls. I'll show you again. Just so you know, what to look for. So once again, guys, it's also mainly for people who uh, have got Kia vehicles. See it all there? Look at that. That's my only thought, guys. When I filled up my tank of fuel, I didn't put my cotton t-shirt over the funnel and all this gunk went inside my fuel tank. Look at it all. And that's what's causing the problem. As I said previous, as I said previous guys, a lot of people in South Africa own these Kia trucks. So what I'm going to do guys is pour it on top of my vice and this wood to oil it up. You'll hear the train horn go in a minute, guys. You'll hear a big train horn. And where it beeps its horn, it's the most dangerous crossing in Dumbleyong. I did a video. <clears throat> hear a train coming. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is grab some gloves because there's a piece of metal in there that's razor sharp. You'll hear the horn go off in a minute, the train horn. There you are. So where the train just beeped its horn then, guys, is the most dangerous crossing in Dombiong. No one ever stops. There's a stop sign there. I did a video where I caught the Shire of Dombiang, about eight of their Shire trucks and utes drive straight through without crossing. And I've got footage of a semi-trailer, a semi-truck, fully laden, 
uh, semi truck going through without stopping and 15 seconds of freight train goes straight through and uh, you know if he had a, if his truck had a drove through 15 seconds earlier he would have got you know com would have got killed train driver probably would have died so if you go to my YouTube channel enter you'll see click on the videos or enter uh, there's a great disaster great disaster and you'll see the footage So the only trains what come through my area, guys, is wheat trains, grain trains, wheat, barley, oats, fully laden uh, grain trains, no, no chemical trains, no freight trains, just grain trains. There used to be freight uh, passenger trains that stopped probably in the 1940s, 1950s. Is that guy so? So if you ever do clean out a Kia fuel tank, just make sure you wear gloves, guys. On the bottom of the tank, there's a oval-shaped piece of metal sticking up, and it's razor sharp. about 15 centimeters long show you to see you at night <laughs> See that, guys? That there. So that little rectangle shaped piece of metal sticking up is razor sharp. If you don't have gloves, guys, you're going to cut your fingers, slice your fingers open. So just wear gloves. And make sure you give it a good clean. It's a huge piece of gunk here, guys. About the size of a bloody 10 cent piece. I have to grab my tweezers, I think, and pull it out. It's huge. So always carry tweezers in your toolbox, guys.
Look at that. See that guys, but anyway. Getting there. That looks like it's definitely a problem, guys. Gunk in the fuel tank. Another big piece. So also guys, I did mention it briefly before, but algae or algae can grow in diesel fuel. So be very careful at adding diesel fuel with floaties inside the fuel. That can also contaminate your fuel. Algae, probably maybe the same in diesel, unsure. Getting there. So I'm lucky with this fuel tank guys because most fuel tanks you can't even put your hand in there, they're all enclosed.
little bit more. Pretty good to me, guys. One more clean drag. A little tiny bit, pressed down on it and it just came off. Ooh. It's a bit of fluff there from the cotton t-shirt guys. The tweezers. <laughs> Possible to get. Here's my roller. Got it. 
to make sure it's all clean. I'll be careful putting fluff and stuff inside the fuel tank, guys, with the cotton t shirts, etc. It's lucky I saw that. Now what I'm going to do guys is grab my air compressor, my little can of compressed air and just blow it just to see if there's any more gunk because hopefully I don't blow myself up. It might not even fit. Yep, that'll fit. Just so if there's any more gunk, I can blow it out. This is just compressed air guys, perfect for your computer keyboards. Compressed air. Probably one of the best little tools I've got. And great for cleaning up your computer desk, especially if you're a smoker. Get rid of all the ash. I used to smoke. Well I think that's that guys, so Check this filter here. I don't want to fiddle around with this one, guys. See something inside it, possibly a little tiny black dot. stuff in there I'll have to remove it eh? will I break it be very careful just don't want to break these guys don't, don't even know how to open it Squeeze. Got my monkey grips, eh? Will I stuff it up? Just a little tiny bit of black gunk in there, guys.
don't think I'll take the risk guys. It's only a couple of little tiny black flakes. I'll probably end up just going into the fuel filter. Just don't want to break this little filter guys, it's too risky. So be very careful guys of fiddling around with stuff, especially if you're not mechanically minded like me. Well, I'll show you what it looks like clean on the inside. So there you go, guys. Beautiful. So I reckon that's definitely the problem. So what was happening was all the gunk was sitting in that bowl, basically. So that bowl, that bowl there is like what I was saying is razor sharp. So just make sure you wear gloves. And a lot of the gunk was getting stuck in there, but also in between that little copper pipe there. And when I first looked at it, when it was full of fuel, it looked clean. There might be a few little tiny bits there, but I think we've pretty well done it. All the rest is pretty well impossible. Unfortunately, I can see a little speck of straw. That piece of straw there. I'll put my hand in there and we'll try and pull it out. That's from me not shaking the rag. Had a bit of straw stuck on it. Got it. Right, just be one more clean, guys. I just don't want to make sure I'm with gloves on. Just get one more quick clean and then we'll go and put it back on the truck. And then we'll remove the fuel filter. Good to me.
when you put the screws back on guys make sure they're tight but not over tightened you don't want to round the nuts and you don't want any air going inside the fuel tank So I don't even know what this one's for guys, I'm not even going to touch it. Looks like an air, something to do with possibly air. To stop the, maybe to stop the, the tank from expanding. An air release valve. Alright. So that's done guys, so... So this is the one I'm talking about. So I'm not even going to touch that guys. That could be something to do with air to stop the tank from expanding to release the air inside the tank when it, when the weather's hot during summer etc. Because the tank will expand. That's what I reckon that's for. But anyway, well, in that fuel there guys, I'll probably put it back into the same jury can what I got it from and I'll use it for cleaning my hands etc I appreciate everyone watching guys hope you enjoyed the video I've enjoyed it it's a good learning experience new rubber it's always something guys
Right, here we go. And also, guys, so once again, this is just to stop stones flicking up and putting chips or cracks inside the fuel tank. Make sure the rubber's on properly, otherwise the metal will cut through the tank. Just fixing up the rubber guys. It's corroded. Not going good.
Hold on, guys. It's always something, guys. It's always something. So this rubber's all corroded. Next time I go to Wagen, I'll order some more from the Wagen Truck Centre. It's corroded and it's just a little bit too long for some strange reason. I'm just trying to think. Right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some zip ties. So I always carry a good stock collar zip ties guys, just a temporary fix. So what I'll do when I go to Wagen next, the Wagen Truck Centre, I'll get Julie, who's in charge of spare parts, I'll get her to order me another strap. So this is just a temporary fix guys, just to hold the rubber on. Hopefully it'll work.
nearly there. One more. Oh, that looks good, guys. Looks pretty good. Now the scary part again, guys, the electrical cord. Looks good. Yep, beautiful. The fuel lines.
that's that, I think. We'll cut off these cable ties. All right, that's all done, guys. So thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. So what we'll do now is we'll go and remove the fuel filter, put a new fuel filter on, then we'll fill up with fuel, and uh, then we see what happens after that. I might go for a test drive, possibly. But anyway... Um, but first we've got to make that little spanner. So is it going to work? So we need to make a spanner, guys. So I can remove <coughs> this. Okay, usually I use monkey grips, but it's really fragile plastic. And uh, we're going to try and make a homemade spanner out of a piece of aluminium. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is go and get my battery for my angle grinder. Hopefully it's charged up. Make a spanner out of a piece of aluminium. Just going to get my battery. Sophie, good girl. Just looking for my safety glasses, guys.
So I can't promise this is going to work, everyone, but you never know. So I'm just a amateur trying to use my imagination, just trying to make a spanner out of this. I'll explain why again. So the reason being guys is with the fuel water sensor, the Kia truck fuel water sensor. It's made out of plastic. So this is a brand new one here. And they're really fragile, so what I usually do to take them off, I'll use monkey grips. Like this. And uh, it'll actually break the plastic like what it's done here. So what I need to do is make a little spanner somehow. So it should be pretty easy. Like I say, I'm no expert. On this side. We do it on both sides.
just so we don't make any mistakes. It's trial and just trial and error. As I say, guys, I'm no expert. I was useless at woodwork, metalwork, and maths. The only thing I was good at at school was English, photography. But I was useless at maths. I struggled in maths, science. I liked science, but I still wasn't the best. Um, but yeah, so at school in year 11 and 12, guys, I did no tertiary education university subjects. I just did what's called veggie English, veggie maths, um, senior English, metalwork, woodwork, photography, and computing in year 11 and 12 when I was 16 and 17, whereas all my other you know, really smart mates did, you know, proper university topics. But because I was bullied at school, guys, really sadistically and hurt when I was a kid, you know, more more than sadistically, all my potential was taken away from me. Like, for example, guys, my beautiful niece, Chelsea's a, a vet doctor, you know, two of my nephews are carpenters and builders. You know, I could have been pretty talented, guys, but these pricks took away all of my potential when I was hurt, you know, sadistically, all from a, being a little boy all the way up until I was, uh, you know, 17 years of age in school. Right, one more thing. stuff this up guys and I'm left left-handed too but I'm ambidextrous so am I doing this right I hope so guys we need to cut this piece out. It'll work. I'm pretty confident it'll work. So that's going to be a spanner. Hopefully we can Put this in there and twist it without using the monkey grips and breaking the plastic. Alright, here we go guys, wish me luck. Wish me luck. Cindy watching in the background my beautiful Dalmatian So she got a hacksaw guys I'm not gonna get my little hacksaw it's just over here might not work guys it might not work but it's safer using a hacksaw than the angle grinder
cramps in my hands. So how am I going to cut this piece across here? How am I going to do that? With an angle grinder and then bend it. As I say guys, I'm useless at metal work. Being a boiler maker, a boiler maker. Oh, that looks pretty good, guys. That looks beautiful. spanner for the water fuel sensor pump I'm oh, sorry that the fuel water sensor so I always carry spares of these guys just in case I do break them so I always carry at least one or two spares because you know the last thing you want is to have one of those break when you're a long way away from home right is this one gonna fit a bit too no, that one's stuffed I'm, I made a mistake on that one guys I think this one's pretty good I'm just going to grab a file guys, a file, it's a little bit, two minutes.
hopefully you don't stuff it up guys. Good. Pretty good, guys. I'll just check this one again. Didn't look too far on this one. Yep, definitely. Went about two mil too far on this one. On this one. Amazing all the tools, all the tools, guys. Everything I use is found at rubbish dumps. Except for my beautiful old leather man. My dad gave me that when I joined the navy. It's a leather man super tool 200. Just a gift from my dad when I first joined the navy in 2001. And that's my real name, W.W. W. Sherman, William Wayne. I was named after my um, cousin who died in a car accident. My, my dad's sister's son died in a head-on car accident a couple of years before I was born. Now guys, what we're going to do is change the oil filter. Alright, so I'll just set up my extension cord. So I'm charging this phone as I'm doing the video.
So that's what my truck is guys, a Nikon, sorry, a Kia K2 700. It's a beautiful little truck guys, but it's just useless for towing. It's got no power, no grunt. That's why I can't take my scrap metal to Perth guys. When I take all my scrap metal to Perth, when I'm going up hills, I get down to literally 20 or 30 kilometers an hour. And it's just too dangerous. But anyway, one day I'll get it all done properly. When I become a millionaire, guys, I'll buy myself a beautiful new truck. Or like I say, the Shire Dumbion's going to be buying me a brand new Toyota Land Cruiser, guys. $150,000. Dead serious too, guys. I don't joke about that kind of stuff. So that cable ties just to hold this cord. There's another one here. This always makes me nervous as well, guys. The reason it makes me nervous is sometimes, well it's only happened once, but once I couldn't get the fuel filter off. So the only way I could get the fuel filter off was by punching a big heavy duty screwdriver through it with a hammer and then twisting it off. So if that ever happens guys with an oil filter or a fuel filter, just got a really big uh, screwdriver. I'll show you. So if you ever can't get the fuel filter off guys or your oil filter because sometimes you might accidentally tighten it instead of loosening it just get a screwdriver like this a big heavy duty one punch it through the middle preferably probably as high up as possible with a sledgehammer all the way through and then just lever it off like that just lever it off and it should loosen. That's only ever happened to me once. All right, now here's a big test, guys. The big test. Here's my homemade screwdriver. Oh, sorry, my home home, a homemade uh, spanner or wrench going to work. Now, as I say, this always makes me nervous. I hate fiddling with electronics, so I'm gonna have to take this off. I um, no, I shouldn't have to. No, in my luck, it's the wrong size. And it is. It's a different size, guys. It's always a way. This one's a different size than the one I measured. Oh, it's always a way. All right, we'll have to get the monkey grips, guys. I might have fallen out of myself. Hold on. So this is the one I ordered off Wagen Trucks. Hopefully they didn't give me the wrong one. A 
and this is what I measured. It's perfect. Like that. Slightly loose. Ah. This is what I hate doing, guys. Bastard. That's exactly what I mean, guys. I just broke it. That's all right. We can fix it. All right. It's fixable, guys. Hold on. Told you I'm useless. Now what we're going to do is take it off, I'll grab a bucket, I'll make myself a, another homemade spanner, probably, guys. This makes me nervous as well. Is it going to come off? Am I doing it the right way? get it accidentally tightening it guys I get confused no I'm boy So that's what I've done, unfortunately, fellas. I told you I'd stuff it up. And the other one I've got needs to be rewired, and I'm not an electrician. So now I've got to try and work out how I'm going to take it off, guys. Um, 
I've got another one. I'll go and check the other one. That one's broken too. So I'm going to go back over to the vise and try and take it off, guys. There's a good chance I'll break it. I think we might have to make another tool, guys. Oh, another one. Just double check. No. no, it's way out. The other one's a different size. It's always a bloody way. I should have measured that one first. make another tool guys because it's the only way I can do it without you know I need to get this off without doing any more damage to it otherwise I won't be able to drive my truck at all
do not strike. pretty good guys so apologize. thanks for your patience everyone but you learn by your mistakes and I'm definitely no professional anyone for anyone just joining I tried to make a spanner and it's just didn't work out guys this one here I measured is a, a little bit bigger than this one here this fuel sensor so now what we're going to do is measure this one so otherwise I can't get it off guys without breaking it There's a good chance I'll stuff this one up too.
Right, back with the hacksaw. Okay. Please God, let me do it properly this time. So my flies undone guys, it's always bloody undone. So this time, I, instead of going on the outside of the, the line, I went on the inside, so um, I can just file it away if it's not, uh, you know, if it's too small, I can use a file. Ha, 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 ha,
can't even promise this is going to work guys but... Bit to go. I'll take the risk with the angle grinder. Nearly there. Just a couple of meals, guys.
Well, we got it. We've got it, guys. We've got it. And the eyes are going to come off. All right, say a prayer, everyone. I'll go back to wage and soon order another one. Told you I'd break something. So it's just a homemade spanner. As you saw before, using the monkey grips. Every time I use monkey grips to remove the fuel water sensor, guys, I break it. Okay, and these things, when you order them, they don't come with spanners. Um, and I use these monkey grips try and undo it always break it like I just did 20 minutes ago so here we go do guys is get um, a clamp okay I'm gonna get a clamp Having no luck. Be back in a minute, guys. So guys, I'm going to make a fool out of myself. I'm just trying to use my imagination. I don't think this is going to work. But anyway, I'm using a clamp.
what's happening is the uh, it's slipping. Got it. Oh, it's all trial and error, everyone. Just trial and error. What was happening is this was just digging into the plastic. All right. So, as you're saying, guys, I'm useless when it comes to doing this type of stuff, but you learn by your mistakes. But anyway, I'm just going to reuse this one again and then I'll order another one when I go back to Wajin. I've got a brand new one here guys but this one here is, needs to be rewired. I don't know how to do that. So it needs this cord here, this one here snipped off and rewired. This one removed. But anyway. A bit of excitement guys. I want to get this over and done with just as much as you guys do. I'm sure you're sick of it. The brand new oil filter here. Always use Ryko. Not fuel filter. guys so what I'm going to do is just dip that in that bucket of diesel just dip it Give the, I think that's what you meant to do so I just gave it a bit of a dip You don't want to over tighten it, otherwise you won't be able to get it back off. Alright, and I'll go and grab... I'm just 
just putting the new o-ring on So how's it going guys? You don't want to over tighten it. Even though it's broken guys, it's still okay. Hopefully. I'll just get some uh, cable ties. So, I reckon now we'll connect to my battery. We'll put some fuel on it. See if we can get it started. So why?
Oh, I'm just going to stand my tripod up, guys, so you can see me fill it up. Get the fuel. So this funnel here guys <laughs> Anyway guys, this funnel is probably the best thing I've ever got for my truck I bought it from an old farmer Probably, you know, 1920s handmade funnel It's just perfect for filling up my truck. This is what I forgot to do guys, this is why I got crap in my fuel tank. I wasn't concentrating and I forgot to put this t-shirt over my fuel tank. So it just filters out any gunk and uh, when I filled up my tank probably about a week ago guys I wasn't con concentrating and I just emptied the jerry can in and it must have had gunk on the bottom of the jerry can. Anyway we'll fill this one up and see if there's any gunk um, in the top of the t-shirt.
So I always leave a little bit just in case there is gunk guys. Just always leave a little bit of fuel on the bottom. Especially for the middle jury cans just to stop them from rusting from the bottom. But there's definitely gunk there, I can see it. And this it's a little bit of gunk there guys. So that's what happened. I filled up the jerry my tank the other day without thinking, and uh, it all had gunk in it. You can see the little spot there, that one there, and down there. So just be careful, guys. That's what I use. Someone else made a really good suggestion, or a stocking or something, maybe. I prefer to use a cotton t shirt. An old surf t-shirt and you know, that'll filter everything there are other ways guys obviously you can use a, a y filter but just to be safe guys but as i say everyone this is my own fault for not creating so who knows i might not have even solved the problem guys i might have even done damage to my truck all right so what we're going to do now is uh just uh Try and start my truck up, but we'll just tidy up a little bit first, guys, and get rid of this funnel. Other t shirts here as well, guys. Oops, well, that one won't be getting used. That'll go in the bin. Alright, now what we've got to do is go on the other side and pump the fuel through, I think, the fuel pump. So we'll do that. Pray to God it all works, guys. I'm just going to close on my canopy first because we might go for a bit of a test drive. Close my seats. Guys, I've got to drain my radiator as well. Got to possibly be a leak in my radiator. Right, another canopy. 
close the other canopy. Roll up my magic carpet. Soapy's dog blanket. Soapy's dog blanket, guys, and we'll nearly there. Now what we got to do is pump up this, hopefully the fuel will pump through. I think so, it's getting harder. So what I'm doing guys is pumping this to pump the fuel through, that there, it's more or less in. Yep. So I can't promise we're going to have any luck guys, we might, you know, conk out again. If we do, we should be able to get home. Uh, it just depends on how far we drive, I'm not going to go far. But anyway, yesterday when I broke down, I drove about probably 15 kilometres, so we're only going to go a few kilometres. All right. And I'll come back and clean up all this mess. I hate mess, guys. So I say a prayer for me, guys, please. In the <laughs> name of Jesus Christ, please God. <laughs> Let this work. Right. Sophie. Come on. Up there. Good girl, hey. Up, oh, come here. So she wears these guys just for any dog baits, getting grass seeds, etc., in her nose or in her eyes. But mainly dog baits. Or dog baits. It's a long story. Look at my videos and you'll understand if you're first time watching this video. Alright guys, so it might take a little bit, it might start straight away. So, here we go, thanks for watching everyone, good day today, kicked another, another goal hopefully.
So we've got a quarter of a tank. All right, here we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, please God, let it work and please let us have a safe trip and please God, let us fix this problem. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, that's my prayer, guys. I told you. Find faith in God, guys, and everything changes for the better. Anyway, that's... Go for a bit of a driveway. I've got to go down to Stubbs Park and check out something. Should we go down there? We'll go down to the football label. The reason being, guys, is I did a video on doing this rainwater tank. I haven't published it yet. It's 45 minutes long. And I made a little mistake. Okay. So what I was supposed to do was add blue metal. See that blue metal in the wheelbarrow there? That was supposed to go on the bottom of the tank. The reason being is so mice don't uh, burrow underneath the tank and stuff up the rainwater tank and also rain so it's, the rain doesn't wash away the sand but anyway guys I'm also going to put some beautiful railway sleepers so it's all going to look nice and neat when I finished I've just got to put a nice fine layer of uh, blue metal Hopefully the battery will last, guys. Let's hope we don't conk out. Break down. And also, while we're down there, we'll go and check out those trees quickly and see if any of them fallen over. The ones who got burnt down by the Shire of Dumbleyong due to their laziness. Alright, I'll turn the camera around in a minute guys. It's privacy for people's private residence. Don't want to upset anyone. Sometimes I can't help putting things on camera, but... So what was happening before, guys, was the truck was totally stalling. come to a stop sign and the truck would uh, literally stall to a stop. And yesterday when I was driving to Wage and it just got really really bad guys. So bad that the cops even stopped, the local Dombiang police stopped and asked if I was okay and they also gave me a warning because I've got one brake light that's not working so I need to get my brake light fixed so that might be the next thing we'll be doing. Anyway guys, it's a beautiful old Dumbiyong pub, Dumbiyong Tavern, dating back to 1914. I've done heaps of videos in this pub guys. I used to, uh, when I was a kid, me and my best mate Simo, used to go and clean the pub every Saturday and Sunday and we'd get free Space Invader games. So we'd clean all the ash and cigarette butts off the ground maybe mop the floors, pick up all the old beer glasses and Crewy, his name was Crewy O'Brien the publican he used to give us free games of Space Invaders and Gallagher, if you're of my age, I'm 52 so Gallagher
Hang on, guys. I... We'll just have a quick look at these trees and I'll do another video on them soon. See if any of them have fallen down. Come on, so I used to play football, cricket, tennis when I was a kid, guys. But anyway, so the farmers burnt off all these paddocks the other day, and I don't know if it was a farmer or the Shire Dumby on, but they stuffed up, guys. They basically killed some beautiful old ancient salmon gum trees. Don't know if they'll survive, but I have got updates coming. One's already fallen, what was already fallen when I witnessed it. But uh, anyway, they're still standing, but they're not going to die straight away, guys. When, as soon as you see all the leaves falling off the canopy, that means they're going to die. And there's another one over there in the middle of the screen. And the other two there to the middle of the screen now, they were untouched. There's a high chance they'll die, guys. So, anyway, they're still standing. And I have got updates in regards to this video, guys. So, stay tuned for that. But anyway, so the farmers ripped it all up now. Whereas before, when you last saw it, it was all burnt. So, the farmers ripped it all up with his ploughs and already planted the wheat. So, they're just waiting for the rain. So, when I saw it, it was all black. The whole paddock was covered in black. Uh, ash anyway guys we'll try and find uh these rainwater tanks come sophie up there sophie my truck's going all right guys up, up, up! This is the old trotting track for horse racing. They're not racing, but trots. Or harness racing. It doesn't get used anymore, guys, because due to insurance, uh, you know, sky high insurance rates or injuries, etc. Okay, so we're going to go and have a look at these rainwater tanks, guys, and see how they've uh, put these big rainwater tanks. All the kids are here coming for football training. All those cars that you just saw, they're football training tonight. So what I did the other day, guys, I, my tanks are just sitting on bare. Sand, so I need to cover it in blue metal like this. As I say, guys, I learned by my mistakes. So basically the blue metal stops mice from uh, burrowing underneath the rainwater tanks and uh, also from the rain washing away the sand so that's what I need to do to that rainwater tank out the front of my yard what you just saw 
anyway guys we'll continue going beautiful rainwater tanks so I need to get a heap of blue metal We'll go for a bit of a drive, eh? It's probably nearly five, probably about 4.30 in the afternoon, I think. I reckon that's definitely the problem everyone I put it was just the fuel tank was full of uh, gunk dirt and it's my own stupid fault but anyway we had a good day today and uh, I learned some things pretty proud of myself guys I did it all by myself whereas before I needed Dale's son Campbell to help me do it so it's another goal kick today guys, another goal kicked. Let's go for a quick five kilometer drive and then we'll head back home and finish the video and I'll clean up the eyes so we just this is a bit of a bush track It's been a good little truck this one has to me guys. I've done 179,400 kilometers in it. I think when I first got it about 10 years ago, uh, nine to 10 years ago, you had about, uh, how much? Probably 50,000 kilometers on it. So I average around 10,000 kilometers a year. So in the last probably four or five months, I've only done about 4,000 kilometers. And I changed the oil, the fuel filter, every 10,000 kilometers. And I do it myself. that railroad crossing what I caught the shore of Dombiong workers driving straight through a big fleet of about eight chai vehicles drove straight through without stopping and a semi trailer driving through and 15 seconds later a huge freight train came flying through at 100 kilometers an hour 
miss this semi trailer by about 15 seconds so when the semi semi trailer went through guys he was going at about probably 60 kilometers an hour didn't even slow down he just went straight through the stop sign i've got it all on footage i think a lot of people drive through that stop sign i've i've even done it many times myself guys without stopping and I've even seen the Dumbo Young Police do it once, a long time ago, about six years ago. So everyone is guilty of it. Alright, we'll just do one more little detour and then we'll head home. We go about another eight kilometres, guys. So, if my uh, truck doesn't stall or have any problems, it's definitely fixed. road goes all the way to Esperance about 450 kilometers away it's a beautiful coastal town it's where one of my old best mates who I mentioned in this video earlier on Vernon Vernon Cooper he lives there my best childhood mate Vernon we used to ride our motorbikes together out the bush, what we just went through, just seen near that railroad track. So Vernon's the same age as me, and he had a brother named Brycey and a sister named Sharon, and Sharon was best friends with my sister. Vernon's dad was a police officer in Dumbuyong, and they also owned the Dumbuyong Roadhouse. I haven't seen Vernon for about probably 10 years. But we're mates on Facebook. Anyway guys, if you wanna join my Facebook, it's up above, you don't have to. It's mainly, it's got nothing really to do with me. It's all about me trying to save Meteorite Island. And also guys, how else it goes to Esperance, you keep going past Esperance and you'll go all the way to Victoria, New South Wales. Sydney, Tasmania, Queensland, the Nullarbor Plain. But anyway guys, my truck didn't stall at all, so that's beautiful. Next job tomorrow is fixing up my radiator, seeing if that's got any leaks, flushing my radiator, adding some new radiator coolant, and then maybe fixing my rainwater tank and just doing other jobs. This track right here guys so we're going to drive all the way back to my house this is where I used to run to and train when I joined the army right here I'd, I'd run all the way to this road then run back home about five kilometers every day 
and also when I was joined the Navy as well, I did the same, but I wasn't as fit back when I was joined the Navy. I was a bit slack. And I was smoking a lot back then. All these beautiful trees on the left and the right hand side you can see the green ones are all called um, acacia longifolia a beautiful long-leaved acacia tree and these bigger ones are the uh, the uh, acacia sorry the uh, casuarina tree the rock she oak those ones there got them growing in my backyard in pots and all that kind of stuff. So this is where I'd run guys when I first joined the army when I was 17, when I was training. That bird there's a beautiful bronze wing pigeon. These are beautiful old ancient salmon gum trees. So I'd run all the way up there guys. Back home, home's only about probably three or four hundred metres away now. But anyway, I'll turn around and I'll just show you these beautiful salmon gum trees, what they look like when the sun's shining on them. It doesn't look as nice now, but when the sun's on the verge of going down, they're a beautiful golden colour. The beautiful salmon gum trees. So this is one of my favourite spots for just looking at the beautiful salmon gum trees. So when the sun shines their light on them, not so much now, but probably in another probably 15 minutes, half an hour, they're just a beautiful golden colour. I just love this little spot. Here guys, we'll go and check one of my tadpoling spots just to see if there's any water. Catch some tadpoles in my front yard pond. In this area right here guys, I used to come down as a kid and trap rabbits with the steel rabbit traps. And just here to the left guys is where Grant's got all his old cars. I did a video on this. A live video so if you go to my live video link section if you're interested you'll see all grants old cars looks like a couple of them are gone but anyway so if anyone's interested they want an old car for their old hobby farm driveway or farm he'll sell you one at a good price uh, so what Grant does is wrecks these cars and sells the part for sells them for the parts. Trucks, cars, vans, boats. So I did a live video on this guys, so if you're interested, just go to my live video link and you'll see. <coughs> All the uh, 
put the link to contact Grant if you're interested in buying any parts off him or anything like that. In this area, just in here guys, is where we used to catch rabbits. Now I'll just see if we can drive up here, it might be blocked off. No. Oh, it is. Yep, they blocked it all off, guys. Anyway, I can still walk up there and catch tadpoles, but I can't drive up anymore. But that's one of my favourite tadpoling spots, just up there for catching tadpoles. They blocked it off, probably to stop me from going there, guys. But I can still walk there. that dam there is where I faked my own death on YouTube and everyone believed that I really did die. The video link is called The Day Billy Died. So I faked my own death guys and there was rumours all around town and on YouTube that I literally died. So I did a video of me actually pretending to drown. It's pretty funny. And right here, if anyone's interested, you won't be able to see much. But there's a dam in there. And I've got memories of uh, certain things happening in that dam, guys, when I was a kid. With me and a couple of mates. It's one of our old swimming spots, but some... Some certain things happened in there, guys, what shouldn't have happened. It's all to do with my childhood trauma. Anyway guys, it's just the way life is. So we fixed the problem definitely guys no fuel problems at all so i appreciate you watching and thanks for your patience guys we made a few mistakes today especially with those spanners they didn't work out for me but those uh fuel water sensor things are an absolute pain every time i try and take them off they always break and they're not cheap so frustrating guys you just cannot get the proper spanners you know there is proper spanners for them but they're as rare as hen's teeth you just cannot find them so they're like a thick plastic spanner and the only way I can take it off guys is by using those bloody monkey grips and every time I try and take them off I break the plastic like you saw but anyway as I say I hope this video has helped some people who own Kia K2 700 trucks I'm sure it will but it's a pretty long video so anyway as long as it helps one person guys then it's all worth it and if it saves them a lot of money Also guys, just before I forget, I've got so much stuff going on at the moment, so right there you can see all my beautiful rocks on the footpath, they're all going to be made into a nice retaining wall in the next few days, okay, so all those rocks are going to be built into a nice little corner retaining wall. My yard's looking nice guys.
you can't really see it's a bit dark but we're getting there Now, for the worst job of all, guys, cleaning up. And tonight, for dinner, I'm just having some nice sushi, sushi, or whatever it's called. What I brought from an oriental shop in Katani yesterday. Some nice sushi. And... And tomorrow we're going to do a, hopefully a nice live video of cooking a nice chicken curry on my new rocket stove. So that's it guys. I really, really appreciate you watching. Everything's fixed now. Sophie's happy. You happy, Sophie? Sophie, you happy? All right, guys, I'm going. Someone